recently launched um, a latest chat book, which is Reader, I Married Him and Other Queer Going On. I hope she's going to read for it this evening. Yes, Dorothy? Okay, please welcome with me Dorothy Smart. minutes. I'm going to try and keep the talking to a minimum. Um, and just to say, um, I, I, I always like to start with a poem by somebody else. Um, and so it's Maud Salter. Um, and she was one of my um, kind of early influences along with like Bernadine and all that, from that era that Bernadine was talking about. And she was the she was the first black woman I knew to publish a collection of poetry. So this is Headstone from her collection. Um, oh, what's it called again? Shame. Oh, mm. I right out my head. Anyway, I'll tell you later. But anyway, it's from her collection that was published um, back in the 80s. It's called Headstone. An unmarked grave for the person who was closest to my childhood. This reality has haunted me for 16 long years. Headstones cost money, and money was short. Single parenthood in the working classes in the six, for the working classes in the 60s bears no resemblance to the alternative living of the progressive, upwardly mobile woman of today. <laughs> One day, I shall carve for you a stone, etched with the words you taught me to express. But until then, I shall keep you here with me in my soul. Mm, wow. and, uh, and that's, I think of that unmarked grave being for all the unknown and, and forgotten and unrecorded kind of black women writers that um, Bernadine did such a good job of name calling this morning, which is important. Um, so I'm just going to dip in. Um, I'm going to read one poem from my first collection, which is called Home. When it began to get dark, I realised this wasn't the joke. Standing at Clapham Common, we still didn't have a place. Moving round Mum Court, looking up at troubled voices that had asked, we two small girls to break open our piggy. I wanted to find a gold mine in there, enough brown coppers to give us a home for the night. Social services took us to Balham, more fretful hours in a warm waiting room. Would they rescue women and children first? Leave us fatherless for the night, waiting, falling asleep, unsure of the morning. Who was in control? Where to call home? And um, um, and then I'm reading from my second collection, Ship Shape. Um, this poem is about the character of um, in a. It is a marked grave. It's to me, it's unmarked in the sense that on the grave it says Sambo, Sambo's grave. Um, which to me is not like a name as such. Um, and so this poem is about um, that Sambo who I renamed Bilal in this collection. And it's uh, a point on his journey towards being in that grave in Lancaster. Or there. This ease. The calabash of his life half spilled and emptying out with each fearful thought dark clouds come over and just to keep it halfway full he counters each cloud with a hopeful retort perhaps it will help them blow over the doubting duppy is there tearing at his life calling back slurs he won't answer can't answer he sleeps and hopes the gin will be gone when he wakes, but it follows him. Dreams of anxiety wake him in the morning. The friendly guinea fowl turned into a vulture. And I'll read 
read the title poem from this small chapbook called Reader. I married him and other queer goings on. <coughs> Reader, I married him. A son with his father's name, loving a man twice his age, hiding from them men that killy last friend, and choppy with a machete. Slice, scarring he fierce, in peering he eyes like a Mr. Rochester, but not mine. I could see a way, clear, clear. Reader, I married him, so he could left out of jail air, take refuge in my British citizenship, my redundant heterosex right to marry any man. So I flew to Bim to do it beachside, tropical style, at least in the photos that would serve as proof. <laughs> Reader, I married him. My best man, his lover, gave me away. Was wedding planner, witness, and his wedding night delight. Man enough to cover every detail of our act, rehearsing Junior in his role, for this was a political act. I was the lifeboat, love boat. Reader, I married him. This young guy, half my age, the Bairdun registrar, looked weary at yet another rented dread, giving Stella her groove back. <laughs> I was a politically incorrect act, bewitch, turn head tourist, trapped by his honey eyes, glazed by my iron man. Reader, I married him. I was confident, self-assured, but still feigning new love kindness, he was all fingers and thumbs, dumb in the face of her authority. Me, the blushing brown skin bride, who produced the rings, asked his lover for the wedding bands. Mm -hmm. Reader, I married him for love of our humanity. Arms entwined, we sipped each other's champagne, clutching me between sandy lanes, columns, our photographer sneaking kisses. Reader, I married him, played a part for a J.A. brother. Reader, I married him, and with our tainted love, we said, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs>